Welcome to Disability Clinic, where we are rethinking the treatment of pain and suffering. I'm your host, Dr. Van, a rehabilitation doctor that specializes in pain medicine. Pain doctors can prescribe some pretty serious drugs, and I think you know what I'm talking about. Opioids. Today, we're going to watch the first episode of Dope Sick and see what we can learn about opioids and pain medicine. Dope Sick can get a little heavy. Spoiler alert if you are unaware of the current opioid crisis. Joining me today is my colleague, Dr. Phoenix, played by Batman. Dealing nicely. Dr. Phoenix is everyone's dream doctor. He's kind, knowledgeable, versatile, and he has a sense of humor. So, how am I gonna pick my nose now? Use that hand. <laughs> he really knows his patients. He goes out of his way to check on them. He even turned on a soul food potluck dinner at Aunt Clara's to make sure this old lady took her pills. I'm telling you, I didn't forget. I believe, I just want to check. Uh. I you know come to I my do. house every night, and I take my pills all the time. That's pretty realistic that a hardworking doctor who is really committed and cares about his patients neglects himself and his own wellness. Ah, yeah, see? Looks like you forgot some. I did? Yeah, you left a few. You can tell he really cares. Easy for me to say. Dr. Phoenix is such a great character to have at the center of this show because even the best doctors can get duped. I would never prescribe a narcotic for moderate pain. Now let's meet the villain of our story, Dr. Sackler. Sacklers, big philanthropists, right? Oh yeah, yeah, they give lots of money to museums and schools, rich person stuff. Very rich. At first, his motivations almost make sense. When we live with pain, we are not living our true selves. We are not living our best selves. He wants to change the way we think about treating pain. Pain was becoming a big buzzword at the time. There was a nationwide movement to rethink the treatment of pain start thinking about how we can cure the world of its pain. And he has this new drug he wants to sell to help people. I propose we take the extended time release of the cotton system and create a new opioid specifically designed to treat moderate pain for long-term use. But you quickly realize that he's throwing an unprecedented amount of money and manpower into pushing a drug that is just as addictive as heroin. Richard has spent more than $40 million in the development of this. Ten video. times more than what we've spent on anything, ever. But who's the hero of this story? I think it's Peter Sarsgaard? We began looking at something that could be big. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? OxyContin. It's Peter Sarsgaard who plays Rick Mountcastle, the guy from Limitless who plays John Brownlee, and the guy from Castle Rock who plays Randy Ramsayer. Assistant attorneys, assistant to the district attorney's office in Virginia, law stuff. Specifically, Purdue Pharma is the company that makes it. This group of lawmen set out to prove the Sackler family and Purdue Pharmaceuticals, they knew exactly what they were doing when they weaseled OxyContin onto the market. They've been marketing the drug and pushing it on doctors as something that's not addictive, when it clearly is. Okay, so here are all the components of Dr. Sackler's strategy for making bank on OxyContin. You don't chase a market, you create it. First, they lied that OxyContin isn't addictive. The sales rep said the drug was different because it was basically non-addictive. Lies! Had you ever heard of a non-addictive opioid? No, sir, I had not. It must have been so exciting and hopeful to believe that there was a strong painkiller out there that wasn't addictive and thus safe to prescribe for moderate, chronic, long-term pain. Less than 1% of people become addicted to OxyContin. It's amazing, right? Dr. Phoenix, did more than 1% of your patients become addicted to OxyContin? I can't believe how many of them are good now. Opioids are addictive whether they're slow release or not. Opioids hijack the pleasure circuits in your brain and they keep you coming back for more and more as you develop a tolerance. You need higher and higher doses. This quickly leads to substance use disorder or addiction. And that can mean losing your job, abandoning your family, committing crimes and compromising your health to pay for more drugs. 50 for a blow job, 100 if you wanna fuck me. You need to get to a hospital immediately. Fuck off. Next. The FDA actually created a special label to say that it's less addictive than other opioids. Something that was never verified by a scientific study. Your most effective talking point is the FDA label. These are your new magic words. 
Delayed absorption as provided by Oxycontin tablets is believed to reduce the abuse liability of a drug. I've never seen a label like this on a class two narcotic. It was the first time the FDA labeled a class two narcotic as less addictive. Did they have any studies that showed it was less addictive? Those studies weren't conducted. And why not? Purdue agreed to a class two classification, which meant that they agreed that it could be abused. So they argued that there was no need to test for what they were already agreeing to. The guy who approved that in the FDA left the FDA to then work for Purdue Pharmaceuticals and got paid very handsomely. So the FDA grants an unusual label. It turns out not to be true. And the guy who approved it goes to work for the company that made billions off the label. That is correct, sir. Then they filmed a commercial. Because of this pain medication, I'd enjoy my life again because there was so much that was just missing from it. I got my life back. That was supposed to be a public service announcement about using pain medicine to maintain function, yet they spun it and made it an ad for OxyContin instead. Then Purdue deliberately sent a promotional video to 15,000 doctors stating these patients were on a drug that they weren't actually taking. Fraud. It's fraud. And this video is the first major introduction of OxyContin. Next, they manipulated drug monitoring programs, which shows what doctors are prescribing what controlled medications to what patients. IMS is about to release a 3.0 version that tracks daily prescriptions instead of quarterly. IMS is a company that makes prescription drug monitoring program. This helps detect when someone might be diverting their pills or selling them or using them for other purposes besides medical treatment. We can use this data to target doctors prescribing Lortab and Vicodin and flip them to OxyContin. The drug companies use this information to identify potential customers, that is patients who are taking other opioids and prescribers who are willing to prescribe opioids. I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done with all the strategies. They also hired a huge workforce of pharmaceutical sales reps to seduce individual doctors and prescribers. You will be part of the largest sales force in pharmaceutical history. All right, make your doctors feel special. Get dolled up, take them to expensive dinners, bribe the receptionist with a mani-pedi so she'll let you in the office. If they've got kids, get them tickets to Disney World. If they're going through a divorce, get them laid. Whatever it takes to win their friendship and their trust. Hey, Phoenix. I uh, understand you're a breast man. And finally. Our initial rollout will be focused on southwestern Virginia, eastern Kentucky, and rural Maine. And do you know why? They targeted communities built on manual labor. They're mining, farming, logging centers, uh, places where folks get injured doing labor-intensive jobs. Who are the most vulnerable to chronic pain and reliance on pain medication. There's a pretty long history down here of pill abuse. These people are in pain. They have hard lives, and we have the cure. Now, the diversion director at the DEA, played by Ahsoka Tano. She's the deputy director of the diversion division. Mm -hmm. Try and say that three times fast. She noticed that OxyContin was associated with increased crime rates. Foster care occupancy has tripled. Increase in child abandonment. Local jails overflowing increase in prostitution. So they just broke into the pharmacy and only took OxyContin, nothing else. Illegal drug sales, theft, armed robbery, child abandonment. Almost every case over the last three years uh, was related to OxyContin, nearly every one. The medical definition of addiction is use of a substance despite that substance negatively impacting your health. This drug has only been on the market for three years, and there's already been a spike in overdoses and crime rates in rural parts of Kentucky, Maine, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Virginia, all areas where this drug was first launched. In 2017, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Washington, D.C. had the highest drug overdose rates in the U.S. Our community is ground zero for a growing national catastrophe. Over the past two decades, there's been a 400% increase in overdose deaths in the U.S., and there's no signs that this is slowing down. Untreated pain is, a, is an unnecessary evil when you have a non-addictive opioid like OxyContin that can be used to cure everyday suffering. You're not gonna let your patients suffer when they don't have to, right? Pain and suffering are a part of the healing and recovery process.
Life is pain, Highness. Anyone who says differently is selling something. But this doesn't mean we should never prescribe opioids. I think a lot of harm happens in doctor's offices now when patients are requesting opioids or they haven't found a better strategy yet. And a doctor who maybe is just meeting them for the first time shuts them down and immediately says, no, I'm not prescribing these opioids to you. Understand that patients who've been on opioids for a long time, they're not only psychologically, but they're physically dependent on these medications. And they don't want to be. Nobody wants to be hooked on anything like this. Withdrawal is super uncomfortable, and there's a lot of associated pain and suffering. So prescribe a safe amount for a short course, like a week, so that the person doesn't go into withdrawal and they're held accountable for coming back and seeing you and they can demonstrate that they're trustworthy and that they're committed to working with you to maximize their non-opioid strategies for pain. You gotta try acupuncture, it really works. Is that some sort of lesbo voodoo? It's not easy, but it's not a mystery either. Doctors want pain relief for their patients. They just don't want to get them addicted. And even if you're doing everything right, like, Dr. Phoenix here is prescribing this young patient who had a recent severe contusion to her back in a mining accident. Was there anything you can give me? There's a new drug that I've been reading about in the journals. He gives her a three-day course of Oxycontin. It seems harmless, right? It seems appropriate. Even if you're doing everything right, things can still go wrong. And what do you think caused so many deaths over such a short period of time? Oxycontin. You're blaming numerous deaths in your town on just one medication. Yes, sir. And are you the individual that prescribed this medication? Yes, sir. Here, we're reminded that Dr. Phoenix is still one of the good guys. Even though he was duped by Purdue Pharmaceuticals, he was seduced by the drug reps and prescribed the drug that led to many of his patients' deaths, at least here he's taking responsibility for his actions so that moving forward, people will hopefully avoid these dangerous prescribing habits. Ooh, after watching that, especially if you're in healthcare, you feel kind of dirty and guilty for working in a system that was so easily corrupted. I hope you enjoyed watching Dope Sick with me. Dope Sick is definitely worth a watch if you don't mind some harsh realities and some depression, depressing, depressing truths. If you want to see another breakdown of anything in TV, movies, or healthcare in general, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.